Here goes the introduction to the poet. Joseph Rodiat Kipling was an English journalist, short story writer, poet and novelist. He was born in India, which inspired much of his work. Kipling's works of fiction include The Jungle Book, Keem, The Second Jungle Book, The Seven Seas, Captain Courageous, The Day's Warp, Stocky and Company, Just So Stories, Traffics and Discoveries, Park of Books Hill, Actions and Reactions, Debits and Credits, Thy Servant, A Dog, and Limits and Renewals and many short stories, including The Man Who Would Be King. During the First World War, Kipling wrote some propaganda books. His collected poems appeared in 1933. Kipling was the recipient of many honorary degrees and other awards. In 1926, he received the Gold Medal of the Royal Society of Literature. He received the Nobel Prize for Literature in 1907. Here is the justification of the title of Rudyard Kipling's The Way Through the Woods. The Way Through the Woods is a poem that is filled with mystery. It has been speculated that the particular forest path that Kipling writes about had been the site of an unnatural death and had been closed down as a result of that. Perhaps Kipling had heard the local population telling such stories and been inspired to write a poem about the same, though there is no concrete evidence behind such a supposition. It's not entirely incredible to think that ghost stories could have got Kipling's creativity flowing. It describes a path through the woods that is overgrown with grass and shrubs and is closed by dense plants. But it also suggests that it still follows the route where the old path used to be. However, the speaker really never makes it clear as to what is truly happening in the woods. This poem shows the power of nature over man. It describes the struggle between man's creation and the nature's power of regrowth. They shut the road through the woods 70 years ago. Weather and rain have undone it again and now you would never know. Here, the speaker says that the road through the woods was shut 70 years ago. It tells that a lot of time has passed and natural occurrences have undone it again. It means that the place where the road once existed has returned back to its prior to the formation of this road. Over the years, the weather and the constant rain have erased the path and have caused the shrubs and grasses to grow. Now, the path is showing no sign of a road as later, with enough time, the streets and sidewalks have been consumed by nature. In the very first stanza, 70 years ago is the hyperbole. Hyperbole is a figure of speech which talks about an exaggerated statement. There was once a road through the woods before they planted the trees. It is underneath the coppice and heath and the thin anemones. Coppice is a small area covered with trees or bushes, whereas Hith is a large area covered with rough grass and wild plants. Anemones are small plants with cup-shaped flowers. 
In this very stanza, the poet says that there was once a road through the woods before the trees had been planted in that particular area, but is now covered with dense undergrowth. Now, the road lies hidden under the leveled road and the beautiful cup-shaped flowers. The beautiful flowers grown in the path of the woods have covered the road under them. Only the keeper sees that where the ring dove broods and the badgers roll at ease, there was once a road through the woods. In these lines, the speaker says that no one other than the keeper or the caretaker of the woods knows that there was a road once upon a time in that place. The keeper sees that the birds and animals are very confident and relaxed. The ring dove bird hatches their own eggs and the badgers are also seem to be very comfortable and relaxed. The speaker repeats that there was a road many years ago. Yet, if you enter the woods of a summer evening late, when the night air cools on the trout-ringed pools, where the otter whistles his mate, they fear not men in the woods because they see so few. Here, the poet says that if one enters the wood on a late summer evening, they can see trout-ringed pools and otters whistling for their partner. Trouts are freshwater fish. The word trout-ringed pools imply that the fish are visible at the surface of the pool, although they are supposed to be deep inside the water. It seems that because people really come to the woods, the fish have been unchecked and thus these pools are plenty of fish. The otters, which are very fascinating mammals, calls for their partners by whistling. They are not afraid of human being because very few people enter the woods. The animals here live a very carefree life as they do not see any humans around and hence do not feel threatened. You will hear the beat of a horse's feet and the swiss of a skirt in the dew, steadily cantering through the misty solitudes, as though they perfectly knew the old lost road through the woods, but there is no road through the woods. The speaker says that if one enters the woods, one will be able to hear the slow and steady movement of a horse passing by, as well as a swissing around of a woman's cart. The trampling of a horse's hoofs can be heard, although the horse isn't physically present. Perhaps it is a ghost from the past when the road was used by men on horseback. The sound of the swiss of skirt confirms that they move in very easy strides as if they perfectly knew where the road lay. Even when a living person won't be able to distinguish it because it is no longer the road that could be traversed 70 years ago. When this poem was written, you could say it was about the industrialization with everyone moving towards the cities and forests and other areas left for mother nature to take care of. This poem uses nature very beautifully and describes how powerful it is for what it is. A beautiful place is created by nature and natural occurrences. The poet discusses this with very elegant words while describing a road 
that he used to travel before it finally got shut down. Now, here goes the summary. The poem begins with the mention of a road through the woods which was closed 70 years ago. The road was left undisturbed. For so many years, the weather and the rain have destroyed the road. The place was looking as it was before the formation of that road. But now, no one could tell if there was even a road through the woods. It is because the road has disappeared beneath the bushes and scrub of different kinds of plants. It is hidden from the human eyes. After the road was closed, trees were planted. Those trees have grown up now and that road has become the part of the wood itself. But now the road which is not seen and which is now a part of the wood itself is full of activity and life. It is occupied by the ring dove that broods there and the burrowing badger which rolls in it playfully. Now, if anyone goes and visits the woods in the late summer evening, he or she will come to know that there is more to the road. The pools are full of trout fish and the otter calls out to its mate. These creatures do not fear human presence because very few people enter the woods. One could hear the trampling of a horse's hoof when the horse isn't physically present. Perhaps it is a ghost from the past when the road was used by men on horseback. One could hear the swiss of skirts moving amongst dew-covered grass. From these sounds, one could tell the difference that these people move in easy walk as if they perfectly knew where the road lay. Even when a living person wouldn't be able to distinguish it because it is no longer the road that was there 70 years back. The poet still feels that there is surely no road through the woods. Answer the questions briefly. Number 1. According to the poet, who could see where the road once lay? Answer. The keeper of the woods could see where the road once lay. Second. When did the air cool the pool filled with fish? Answer. The air cools the pool filled with fish in the night. Third. Why did the otter not afraid of men? Answer. The otter was not afraid of men because there were very few men in the forest. Fourth. What creatures were seen and heard in the forest? Answer. Otters and horses were seen and heard in the forest. Think and answer the questions. First. Do you think all the sounds in the woods were for real? Why or why not? Answer. No, the sounds are just a figment of the poet's imagination as he is trying to recall the old times gone by. Second. Do you think there is a mystery in the poem? Justify your answer. Answer. Yes. There is a sense of mystery in the poem as we don't know why the road was shut. Skirt in the dew makes the poem a little mysterious and intriguing and one wonders what happened to the road.